It's not just about vitamin D, it's about getting outside, not looking at screens all day. We need to make sure that we balance out our lives. Welcome to Taiwan. I noticed that most of my subscribers are not living in Taiwan, so I wanted to share with you life in Taiwan, but also stay on the focus of this channel, which is content around filmmaking, cinematography, camera work. Yeah, here we are in Taiwan. I'm on my Taiwanese motorcycle, but yeah, I'm going to be uploading two videos this week, and they're around similar overlapping topics. I'm filming outside again because there's beautiful sun today. It's kind of rare. Not really rare, I would say Taiwan is actually quite sunny in general, but in the winter months there can be a lot of cloudy and rainy days. For all of you, make sure that you're getting enough sun wherever you are, especially during the winter, because it can actually affect your creativity and your mood, you know, how you're feeling inspired to do your work, your camera work. Practicing, you know, encouraging ourselves to practice our work, but not just practice, but to push ourselves to try new things, to find inspiration. This term inspiration, it's kind of cliche, but we watched this Netflix film, a Korean film called Ballerina. It's an action film like John Wick. Personally, I enjoyed this film way more. A lot of Korean films, man, they really understand art. And it's not just visual art, but the music and the editing, the art direction. There's so many components that go into it. Ballerina, it really stood out to me as a visually stunning piece. And I watched some behind the scenes, some interviews with the art director, the director, and the music producer. And they're all quite young. I think, I feel like they're probably in their 30s. After I saw it, strangely, a couple scenes really stood out to me, and it was the Nu Zhu Zhao, the main female character. She was sitting in her apartment. This is towards the beginning of the movie. There are just three shots in particular that I really liked. It kind of pushed me to kind of do my own basic more simple version of it actually last week when i in the posted video the look was inspired but i didn't fully commit to the look i didn't really push myself all i did is set up one projector light and then i just used a practical that was the wrong color temperature and i didn't gel the key light either so this time last night i pushed myself out of my comfort zone with no budget just me by myself i filmed myself in the kitchen initially i knew i wanted that key light to have a little more yellowish orange tint to it to kind of match the look of the movie. I probably could have gotten away with that, but I know there's a lot more going into the scene, but for the sake of trying to find a balance between making it a perfect copy of the frame and the scene and the mood, I also kind of wanted to add my own flavor into it. And I saw that from this back shot of the lead, there's a bit of purple in the shadows. So what I did was I took a second light, a tube light. I put some purple in the background, but just very subtly. It does do a good amount to add some color contrast to the scenes. Here I'll show you some behind the scenes, which I feel like is also a big part of this channel. Even when I'm not doing professionally paid work, I still want to show some behind the scenes of the process and kind of document for myself, which in itself is kind of therapeutic as well. And I want it to be simple. I didn't want it to be an exact copy of similar framing. The feeling, the emotion that I really mostly wanted to convey was this loneliness, this emptiness. A lot of people will try to recreate frames from big budget projects, and I think that is a great way to practice. The light is backlighting me right now, so sure, you're going to lose some contrast. If I was filming this professionally, I would definitely add a bounce. So yeah, make sure you guys aren't inside watching movies all day and editing, and even if you're working inside in a studio, make sure you go outside every day. It will drastically improve your mood and you'll feel more inspired being out in nature more professional, consistent theme and look for this channel could be me filming in my studio with lights and, you know, complete control over the lighting, but that's not what real life is mostly about. But I guess that's not the only goal and that's not the only thing to focus on is having completely polished videos. It's okay to have things not perfectly lit and framed. And that's why I choose to use this YouTube channel as a way to kind of express the imperfections and the more unscripted areas of my life here in Taiwan. This is another one of my favorite places, local spots. It's a university near where I live. It's a great place to get some more sunlight. It's not just about vitamin D, it's about getting outside, not looking at screens all day. 
We need to make sure that we balance out our lives. Practicing cinematography, how to, finding ideas to practice. We're not always gonna have a crew around us. We're not always gonna have budget. Last year, I filmed my first short film and it was a passion project. If clients are coming to you asking for that type of work, then find ways to do it yourself. When we talk about cinematography, usually it's two things, two components. The first component is DP, being a director of photography. And then the second part is having the expertise of a gaffer, whether you're a gaffer yourself or you take on some roles of a gaffer or you have budget to hire a gaffer team. That is what's going to help with elevating your cinematography to the next level. For this short film, I did hire two gaffers. It was Jack and Tom. They have a lot more experience with gaffing than I do. I always tell myself if I wasn't such in love with cameras, then I would be a gaffer because I feel like gaffers, they're the ones who are doing the, the true painting of a image of a frame. Through my years of work, I have accumulated some lights, but gaffers, they are lighting scenes on the daily. As a freelance DP, I'm not working every week. My cases, they come and they go. Usually, I'm focused on the camera. For little things, sure, I'll bring a couple of lights. Obviously, in an ideal world, you'll have budget to have built out full crew. But when you don't, you can practice with what little you have at home. There's something beautiful about just keeping things simple and pure with filmmaking. When you want to take it to the next level, then you can always do a passion project or a spec ad and pitch it to a potential client. This short film, yeah, I've been wanting to shoot narrative for a while. Who knows if an opportunity would ever come. So that's why we kind of put this together with a bunch of friends and we filmed it in Taiwan. And surprisingly, we actually won two awards. It was a really positive experience overall. I learned a lot of lessons. The point of this video is no matter your situation, you could start as little as filming a scene by yourself, or you can take it another step if you want to invest and hire some people to help shoot a passion project with you. These are a couple of ideas to practice your cinematography that you can do right now and that I will continue doing moving forward. This year, I also plan to invest in a personal passion project. I'm guessing it will probably be narrative. I'll also be spending money out of my own pocket again to shoot the type of work that I want. And I highly encourage you to do the same.